Let's bring in Caitlin Huey Burns. She's a CBSN political contributor and a national political reporter for Real Clear Politics. Good to see you. Hi, good morning. So this latest twist in this Russia story, what do you make of it? And what do you make of the fact that Jared Kushner is volunteering to talk to mm -hmm. them? Well, it's a big deal because Kushner is the one who's actually working in the White House right now. As you mentioned, he was the conduit uh, during the transition between the admin incoming administration and uh, Russian officials and agents, potentially. Um, so this is a big deal because he's within the White House right now. Um, and it's also a big deal because it continues, this, this Russia investigation continues, of course. There continues to be kind of a drip, drip, drip of sorts. Um, and this figures to keep this in the spot. Yeah, and one of the things that we are just learning is about uh, the chairman of the House Intelligence Committee, mm -hmm. Devin Nunes, apparently going to the White House the day before mm -hmm. he briefed the president, going to the White House presumably to meet with a, a source. What do we know about that? This is very, uh, this is this is n very rare, right? Mm -hmm. I profiled the Intelligence com uh, Committee before the big Comey test uh, testimony last week, um, and many members of the committee had commented about the committee being a rare kind of bipartisan committee in this day and age. That all changed a couple days later when Nunes went to the White House uh, without telling anybody else on the committee. Um, there has always been a criticism that he could potentially not be as nonpartisan as past committee chairs have been, given his role in the transition uh, of, of the Trump transition. Mm -hmm. And so this is this is a really big deal. Democrats are saying that that move last week already undermined the investigation. You have bipartisan calls now calling for an independent prosecutor uh, for the Russian ties. Um, the, there, there are lots of questions about what Nunes is trying to do here. There is criticism, of course, that he is trying to, um, uh, you know, cover or provide some cover for the administration during this, which mm -hmm. is a big deal. Yeah, we're going to have to continue digging on this story because it is just sort of breaking right now, yeah. and there's probably a lot of questions that uh, he will have to answer. Um, let's go back and talk about the health care bill mm -hmm. failure of last Friday. One of the criticisms that is starting to emerge right now is the fact that Republicans for the last seven years have been able to campaign and win seats mm -hmm. on the back of saying to their constituents that they're going to repeal the Affordable Care Act. And mm -hmm. yet, after seven years of saying that, after winning yeah. all of those seats, they are unable to deliver that promise that they made to their constituents. Is mm -hmm. it because, as some have posited, Paul Ryan is really good at putting together policy papers, but really bad at legislating and passing laws. Well, as the president said, you know, these divisions within the Republican Party predated his presidency. But it's no surprise to anyone else that this is a very difficult uh, conference to get together. We've seen that on a variety of different bills. Just to put this in perspective, Republicans camp, uh, uh, voted dozens and dozens and dozens of times during the Obama administration to repeal and replace this in some form or fashion. How many times have they done that in the uh, Trump administration? Zero. And the president now is ready to move on after just a couple of weeks in this fight. So remember, lawmakers are going back in April to their constituents. We'll see pushback perhaps at town halls. You also have a lot of lawmakers, lawmakers that I talked to in the past couple of weeks, who are kind of glad not to have had to take that vote and be on record for something, a legislation that was very unpopular. So you have senators and some House uh, lawmakers saying, glad we didn't have to vote on this. But it does present them a problem. And Paul Ryan on Friday did not have an answer for how these uh, lawmakers should go back to their districts and say why they backed away from a campaign promise. Right. And now they're going on to something super duper easy, tax right, reform. Right, of course. <laughs> uh, so keeping in mind how difficult it was to, to, uh, to tackle health care, I mean, mm -hmm. what do you think this says about them going after tax reform uh, Tax now. reform, as you know, is an extremely complicated issue. There are differences between among uh, Republicans in the House, but also between Republicans in the House and Republicans in the Senate. Uh, there's a reason tax reform has, comprehensive tax reform hasn't been done in 30 years. It's very difficult. Health care was a unifying issue. As you mentioned, it was kind of an organizing uh, a, a way for Republicans to not only campaign, but also to fundraise, to organize, oh, to a rallying get cry. votes. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, the fact that they weren't able to unite around uh, policy when it comes to health care, I think portends very difficult times ahead for tax reform or anything else. Yeah. I, I wonder about the Freedom Caucus because you've got one congressman now, Ted Poe, he's saying he's leaving mm -hmm. the Freedom Caucus on CNN. He was quoted as saying, or he did say on CNN, that the members of this caucus would vote against the Ten Commandments. In other words, <laughs> mm -hmm. they've become so obstructionist mm -hmm. and they are in districts that are fairly safe for them. 
them. That exactly. They've become a party of just saying no to everything. Now, that was easy when mm -hmm. President Obama was in office, but now mm -hmm. that they've got all houses of uh, the, both houses of Congress mm -hmm. and the presidency, but they still want to say no. Right. This is the transition from being uh, a party to a governing party, right? A political party to a governing party that they haven't quite figured out. You're right. These districts are very safe. They, the threats from Donald Trump of primary challenges, of losing their seats, really fell on deaf ears among these members. And so you do have lawmakers who say, look, let's cut them loose. Let's try to make some deals with Democrats. Democrats, though, and this is what Priebus uh, and, and President Trump have alluded to, uh, trying to work with them for the future, Democrats really have no incentive at this point to work with President Trump. Not only has he blamed them uh, for the fall of this health care bill when he didn't reach out to them in the first place, uh, but he has also uh, presented, you know, you have a very restive, uh, active uh, uh, Democratic liberal base right now pushing back against anything Trump wants to do. So I'm looking for the next couple of weeks, what incentives Democrats have to work with with this president on things like tax reform, things like infrastructure, and so forth. I think that's going to be a big test. Yeah, definitely. Caitlin Huey-Burns, thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Good to see you.